All right, so you want to take some notes on this and get everything in your notebook um, if you didn't get these down from earlier today on the board. So these are each of the variables and what they represent. So n is the number of sides of our polygon. Uh, sigma i, which is the summation, um, that's our interior sum. Then we have each interior, our exterior sum, each exterior, and what we noticed in class is that each interior and each exterior are a linear pair. So they are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. So our interior sum is equal to the number of sides minus 2. That part gives us the number of triangles, and we multiply that by 180. So look at two examples. Let's find the interior sum of a heptagon. So that means we're going to identify our variables. Um, so n, the number of sides is 7, and we need to find the interior sum. So we have 7 minus 2 gives us 5 triangles, and within 5 triangles there are 900 degrees. The next type of problem would be finding n, finding the number of sides, given an interior sum. So we're given 1,080 degrees. So now our equation is going to tell us to set 1,080 equal to n minus 2 times 180. We need to distribute our 180. So we have 1,080 equals 180n minus 360. And then we are going to add 360 to the other side. So we have 1440 equals 180. So we find out that we have an octagon. We have eight sides. OK, next we have each interior. And if we find the interior sum, and we divide it by the number of sides, which is also the number of angles, um, then we'll know the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon. OK, the key here is that it's regular. So let's identify what we know. So we know we have a pentagon. So we need to find each interior. So we know that i is equal to 5 minus 2 times 180 divided by 5. So we know that each interior angle is 180 degrees. But if we had to go backwards and we found out that each interior angle is, OK, sorry about that. Each interior angle is 140 degrees. We need to be able to work backwards. So we say 140 degrees is equal to n minus 2 over 180 divided by n. So we multiply n to the other side. And then we also distributed the numerator. So we move this up here, and we distributed. So that was two steps in one. We um, subtract our 180n. So we have a negative on both sides, so we're OK. So we have negative 40n equals negative 360. And we find out we have a nine-sided figure. Now, we can make this problem a little bit easier if we think about the fact that each interior and each exterior are supplementary. So if the interior is 140, then each exterior is 40. And from here, the exterior sum we know is 360 degrees. So if we take 360 degrees and divide it by 40 degrees, we have nine sides. So it's much easier to think um, each exterior than it is to think each interior. But still, if you want um, a systematic process with the formula, there you go. Next, we have the exterior sum. And it doesn't matter if I have a 23-sided figure or a million-sided figure. The exterior sum is exactly the same. It's 360 degrees. All right, so now we have each exterior. So we need to take our sum and divide it by our number of sides, which is equivalent to the number of angles. So if we want to find the measure of each exterior angle of a 13-sided figure, we know n is 13. And so we find E, which is each exterior, by dividing 360 degrees into 13 parts. So it would be approximately 27.7 degrees. Now if we were to go backwards and we said, OK, let's find the number of sides, if we know each exterior is 20 degrees. So now our formula is 20 equals 360 divided by n. Okay, multiply both sides by n. 
divide by 20 degrees, and we have an 18-sided figure. So the more you go through these, the better you will get with them, um, and you may start to find other shortcuts that you can use. But all of these should be in your notes for tomorrow, and we will be checking them.